Next up, the hunt for dinosaurs. What I've been able to do is actually find not only skeletal characteristics, but social behaviors of the dinosaurs that match social behaviors that birds have. Nothing gave a shot in the arm to dinosaurs more than Jurassic Park. The story of a paleontologist roaming an amusement park on steroids was a major hit. The fact is, the movie's Dr. Grant was based on a real-life dino hunter named Jack Horner, who first advanced the notion that birds evolved from dinosaurs. When Spielberg wanted to bring dinosaurs to life, he brought in this guy. My name is Jack Horner. I'm a paleontologist. I dig holes in the ground. And once in a while, I dig something up other than a sewer pipe. Jack Horner, tech advisor for Jurassic Park and now the sequel, The Lost World. He's one of the world's top dino detectives, curator of Montana's Museum of the Rockies, author and professor. Horner heads the largest dinosaur research team in the country, and his finds have turned paleontology on its ear. Normally I study anything that shows their behavior, and in the last 15 to 20 years, I've found the largest dinosaur nesting grounds in the world, the first dinosaur eggs with embryos, the first dinosaur eggs in the Western Hemisphere, the first evidence of gigantic herds, the first evidence of migrations, you name it. <laughs> Lots of stuff. His digs have turned up evidence, perhaps even proof that birds descended from dinosaurs. In these studies of behavior, what I've been able to do is actually find more characteristics. Not only skeletal characteristics, but um, social behaviors of the dinosaurs that match social behaviors that birds have. This whole business of dinosaurs migrating is very similar to migrations of birds. Um, in a nutshell, yes, I believe dinosaurs and birds are the same thing. But you never look at birds the same way. Well, I've heard that the Chinese have found a dinosaur with feathers, which would pretty much lock the controversy over, you know, dinosaurs and birds. One of these days, the people that, that don't believe it are just going to have to say, I was wrong. I say that all the time. Most fossil hunters travel the world digging up as many dinosaurs as they can. What I do is I, I go out and I try to find the same old dinosaur I found the last time. I'm interested in behavior and, and as much information as we can get about life histories of dinosaurs. And the only way you can do that is to have a, a whole bunch of specimens of one kind. In other words, eggs and babies and juveniles and, or nestlings and juveniles and subadults and adults of, of one species. Horner's most historic finds are the remnants of an entire dino herd, some 10,000 waddling duckbills, and the most complete T-Rex ever discovered. It was that dig that got him this gig. Jurassic Park, the biggest grossing film ever made, and Horner helped make it happen. He's now reprising his role as Truth Cop for the sequel. Basically, I'm there to make sure that all of the things we really know about dinosaurs are incorporated in the animals as living creatures. I'm also there to make sure that Steven Spielberg himself and the rest of the actors pronounce their words right, <laughs> which is the biggest. I mean, it, I just was there last week, and that was my, my biggest problem was getting Steven Spielberg <clears throat> to say almost any dinosaur name right. <laughs> In his two decades of digging, Horner never imagined that he would one day help bring dinosaurs to life. The first time I met the Tyrannosaurus rex, and even the Velociraptors, the puppeteers would run them for me so, they could, so I could see the actions that they would make, and, and I was just blown away. The puppets in the Lost World are about ten times better, and, and they, are very, they are frightening. Despite having the dino detective on set, not everything in Jurassic Park rang true. 
I think Tyrannosaurus Rex was a scavenger. Wouldn't chase children, they wouldn't try to eat tires off cars, or that's the only thing they did correctly was eat the lawyer. <laughs> The technology of digging dinos hasn't really changed much over the years. Removing a fossil is still a delicate surgery. They still have the original bone substance, the calcium phosphate, even some of the soft tissue. Dinosaur bones, even though you, know, you think of them as fossilized as rocks, are actually very fragile. So when, they're, when we first expose them, we have to coat them with glue, harden it up, encase the bone in a plaster of Paris jacket, and then it's done. And then, then it either goes into collections or it goes into one of our special laboratories. Mm. <laughs> the dig itself may be old school, but back at the lab, Horner uses high tech to hone in on lost worlds. A lot of our modern technology, we, we can actually treat the fossil as though it were not a fossil at all. Now with CAT scan technology, we can, we can look at the inside of, of a skull and, and see things like the brain case. And morphing programs allow us actually to show what we have, the different stages of growth that we have. If we find adult skulls, we can predict what the babies would look like. And if we find babies, we can predict what the adults look like. The computers now are allowing us to ask better questions, or at least different questions, and come up with, with with more information about the lives of dinosaurs. Horner has spent much of his career proving people wrong. They told him that Montana was the wrong place to dig. And of course, we've been finding all kinds of dinosaurs lately, so we know that they were here. They said the dinos didn't flock or nest. They also told him he'd never see a T-Rex in his lifetime. The lost world. I can't tell you about all this stuff, but, but there, are, there, are, there are dinosaurs in it that are so realistic that that they kept catching me talking to them. <laughs> Recently, Chinese paleontologists discovered the remains of a 121 million year old feathered dinosaur, which provides what may be the most graphic evidence yet that birds may have descended from the big guys. 